see now we start triggering twice and this is so much damage look at this i mean they're already at two but now they are super dead yeah and that is the gg good game opponent Hello YouTube, welcome to this fine day and today we are going to have a look at Go Shintai of Life's Origin in Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by playing a bunch of shrines that get a better and better effect the more shrines you have out on the field and just overwhelm the opponent with a ton of value. So, um... If we look at our commander, Go Shintai of Life's Origin, uh, the commander has two effects and one teeny tiny detail that is very important. So, Go Shintai of Life's Origin, a 4 mana 3 4 legendary enchantment creature, shrine, very important. And then, first thing, for 5 mana, Wooburg, you can tap the commander and return an enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And then, more importantly, whenever Go Shinto of Life's Origin or another shrine, uh, <laughs> no, another, yeah, another non-token shrine enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 colorless shrine enchantment creature token. And this is so important, like the token being a shrine and the commander being a shrine is important because every shrine has an effect either on your upkeep, your end step, or beginning of your first main phase uh, that basically gets repeated for every shrine you have. So for example, if we look at Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, uh, at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you add X mana of any one color, uh, where X is the number of shrines you control. Or if we look at Honden of Infinite Rage, at the beginning of your upkeep, Honden of Infinite Rage, Rage deals damage to any target equal to the number of shrines you control. There is you know, there are a bunch of shrines in every color, and there are also some creatures, for example, Go Shintai of Boundless Vigor, a 2-mana 1-1 one, one trampling creature, that at the beginning of your end step, you may pay 1, and then if you do, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target, on target shrine for each shrine you control. Um, so they printed Go Shintai of Life's Origin, the Sanctum of All, we will get to that later, and three shrines in each color um and we run every single one except um two creatures we're not running the red creature and we're not running the black creature because i feel like they're too inefficient um for example if we look at go shintai of lost wisdom the effect of milling the opponent for each shrine control is kind of negligible but at the very least i um I can play this on turn two to block um, uh, against aggro decks, and just later on, just being a two mana shrine is good. Um, like, I would rather have a efficient shrine without text than a really really bad shrine with you know the usual shrine text. Because if your shrines are just bad, right? Um, then you're not going to utilize the effect very much. So the only thing that actually matters is the mana cost, and that's why we run the shrines we do run. And then, you know, the big shrine, the Sanctum of All, costs five mana. We have a bunch of tutors in the deck, and you're going to search for that a ton. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may sh search your library and or graveyard for a shrine card, put it onto the battlefield, if you uh, search your library this way, shuffle. And then if an ability of another shrine you control triggers, while you control six or more shrines, that ability triggers an additional time. So for example, if you have six shrines in total, you play a shrine, you get two tokens with Go Shinta of Life's Origin. But obviously this is great in you getting your mana. And the blue shrines are very, very important for this. And the shrine you're going to search, uh, basically the... <laughs> by far the most with the Sanctum of All is going to be the Sanctum of Calm Waters. We have two blue shrines that um, draw you cards. The Haunted of Seeing Woods is a 5 mana shrine that at the beginning of your upkeep draw a card for each shrine you control. And Sanctum of Calm Waters is a 4 mana shrine that uh, draws you cards at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase and then you have to discard a card. The reason why it's so good, Sanctum of All triggers in your upkeep, you get a Sanctum of Calm Waters, and now you immediately draw the cards, and um, that is just really, really devastating. So if we have the curve of a 4-mana Go Shintai of Life's Origin, now we have two shrines on the field. Sanctum of All, now we have six sh 
shrines on the field because we play the sanctum with the Goshen tie of life's origin and then that fetches out the sanctum of calm waters we get another token from Goshen tie now we have six shrines that allows us to draw six cards twice because now we have six shrines and um it you know the draw effect triggers twice and that is extremely extremely brutal especially if we then curve into an extra turn um we can just take an extra turn from that like it's it's just very likely to kill the opponent then because with the next fetch we are just usually getting a sanctum of stone clanks that drains the opponent for one for each rank we control that effect happens twice and you know, suddenly they are just dead, right? Uh, the rest of the shell here is a bunch of ramp, a bunch of cheap interactions, and some concessions were made in the deck to respect how many people are actually playing Ghost Shinta of Life's Origin right now. Like, the queue is full of Ghost Shinta of Life's Origin, so we are playing an offer you can't refuse as a one mana non creature counter spell and a swan song as a one mana counter spell. Because these one mana counter spells are really, really good in the mirror match. Um, like apart from the shrines and you know a ton of ramp. Um, also, a shout out to Sanctum. We were being absolutely busted in this deck. <laughs> you know, it's basically a shrine that gives you mana. Uh, well, while not being a shrine actually. Um, we have two board wipes that we can tutor for. Yes, we play a couple of creatures, but shrines are usually fine getting their board wiped because they can just deploy a bunch of value in, you know, non-creature shrine, uh, shrines. And um, we don't want to get overrun early. We have a bunch of cheap interaction. We have the one mana discard spells in, uh, that we have access to in the format because those are also really good in the mirror match because what usually ends up happening is um, the player who goes first is going to jam a very relevant um, uh, shrine onto the battlefield first. But if you just, you know, duress them once, you can take their crucial piece, maybe a Sanctum of All, right? Maybe a Sanctum of Calm Waters, Haunted of Seeing Winds, those kind of draw engines. Because the, the person is going to win the mirror match that is going to draw more cards. And that is also why we have things like Whirlwind of Thought and Escape to the Wilds in the deck. Um, there are not too many more things to talk about um, the uh, these cards that, you know, the, the non-land cards here. We have, we have a bunch of cool tech in here, um, but what I do want to talk about here is the mana base. And I've spent a bunch of time to get the mana base working the way it does. And I'm just going to go over my thoughts here real quick. So our main color that we want every single game is going to be green and green can fix us into other colors, right? Like you just have green sanctum of fruitful harvest or cultivate that you just immediately fix your mana. And um, our secondary color is usually black, uh, tertiary, uh, uh, third color, tertiary color? <laughs> is uh, white and then the fourth color we want is blue and then the last of all like we only have four red cards really right and well the red and blue are kind of even to be perfectly honest but point being here is we have a bunch of options between check lands and shock lands and slow lands and fast lands and what not right so the lands we're actually play from the check land cycle um, something like a woodland cemetery that cares if you have either a swamp or a forest in play. We only play the ones in the deck that come into play untapped if you control a forest, or most mostly if we control a forest, right? And then our triomes are actually only the triumphs that are forests themselves. We have a snow mana base for into the north, and that can grab you know, either the basics or one out of two, um, um, one out of two uh, snow dwarves, and we're running Arctic Treeland as a forest uh, with white as the as the option, and then we also run a where is it? I believe we run the green blue one. Yeah, Rhinewood Falls, um, because. We are going to, you know, we want the forest density in the deck just for the mana base to function. Um, but 
we are we're usually quite likely to have access to black but sometimes we need double white for something like a wrath of god or double blue for a time warp but just sometimes we just don't have those colors at all and this is why we chose uh these specific snow duels in the deck so there is a lot of thought in the mana base also you can see the double forest here right like we have one more forest than the other lands and then busage is also for the mirror match and you know what i think we have to select this artwork there we go perfect um anyways i uh, hope you enjoyed the video uh oh also one more thing before i forgot to mention a lot of people are playing sagas um as enchantments to bring back with go shintai of life's origin um there are one or two sagas that i might be interested in um binding of the old god being the most relevant one because it is rem cheap removal or well, relatively cheap removal that you can get uh with something like a idyllic tutor but i just found that we didn't have enough space i felt like we need more efficient answers like baleful mastery like catch all answers uh, like something like an assassin's trophy right um because we're so light on removal our removal needs to do everything but it needs to do it cheaply because it can't like our removal is not really allowed to expensive because uh, be, to be expensive because we're just going to ram our shrines onto the field right that is what we want to do and we really don't want to delay this game plan because we get more and more and more value each turn so i i, I just feel like the sh the um, sagas are a bit too expensive and yes it is kind of cool that you can just repeatedly return them but the way i see it the the returnability on goshen of life's origin is secondary if our like enchantments get countered or destroyed we can bring them back fine if not that is also okay Anyways, now, <laughs> enjoy the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, I sometimes post really cool deck lists, and um, let's do this. We are ready to play against Mazzy, True Sword Paladin. And, um, oh yes, this is kind of exactly what we want here, beautiful. Um, so Mazzy is a... Oh, the new commander. Uh, it's basically Naya enchantments. Ah, beautiful. The audio broke again. Can we just fix it like this? Is there... Ah, no. Nah. Ah, why, why would you fix your client wizards? Um, so we have blue, we have red, we have white here, so we can actually play the Wilbur of Thought. This is going to draw us a bunch of cards. And a Day of Judgment is something that we really, really want in a matchup like this. Um, so just drawing any land is probably going to be great. I think we just want to, um, uh, we just want to play well with no thought. Hmm. Of tricky. Maybe it's worth fateful absencing that just to, um, just to make everything, um, cost more. And now, since we draw the, drew the second white, I think we can kill this ram with a Day of Judgment later. Um, yeah, just the, just getting the card advantage online is pretty pretty important for a shrine deck. Okay, this ram. Like I'm I'm kind of fine if they draw a ton of cards here, um, just because we are going to outvalue them. We are going to lose a fight where they tempo us out really. Um, I think we just want to pond in off Night's Reach just because that doesn't die to a Day of Judgment. Okay. I uh, would have obviously uh, loved to draw a land there, but I will. Val the Keeper of the Flame. Yes, I, I believe that is worth board wiping here. Uh, we could also just grind them out a bit. But, and then to, like the, the teferi's protection is basically guaranteed to resolve whereas if we day of judgment they give their team indestructible that's kind of bad but oh, let's just attempt it and it resolves and yeah now, now they are just in a lot of trouble um they're just going slowly going down in cards also they haven't drawn their green source for their commander yet which is really really unfortunate um 
I found that, you know, three color three color mana bases are kind of bad on Arena, so like you really want to mold your three colors and you want to avoid things like Castle Outbay and play basics instead. Um uh, let's see, I think we just double spell here with Ghost Shintai of Life's Origin and then a Sanctum of Stone Fangs. That should be pretty good and just basically seal the game. So go Shinta of Life's Origin, sure. Sanctum of Stone Fangs draws us a card and then we have five shrines next turn, that means we drain them for five. We gain four. Yeah. It is That is pretty pretty brutal. Please draw your green source, opponent. No green. Okay. Green source? Reader ah damn it. We was hoping they would draw a green source. Uh, GG. We are ready to play against Joda Archmage Eternal. And so this is one of those hands where, you know, most people would say, okay, let's keep it. But this is really not one of our best shrines. And I think we are very incentivized to just mold to a shrine that actually, you know, puts pressure on the board and draws cards, and I, I, this is a bit too slow for my taste. So let's mulligan. Uh, yeah, this is better, um, because while we do not have the white currently... Wait, we do not have a white currently. Yeah, this is... Maybe, maybe let's overthink that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we were supposed to not play the Zagoth Prime and cycle it in chances of drawing a white source. Um, I think we want to squeeze out the value here. And if our of promise, that is fine. We, we just need to counter the big spells. Like we can't really stop them. Like we don't have enough interaction to stop them from ramping. Um, Oh, yo, yo, yo. Kind of rough. It was a white sauce game. White sauce would be pretty great here because we get to. Um, uh, oh, Inspired Ultimatum. Yeah, that was a reason to keep up Swan Song, I guess. Uh huh. White sauce off the top. Well, technically, a white sauce. Ornithopter, Sanctum, Swing for one, nice, nice. A lot of people also started, you know, just putting in a lot of enchantment hate into the decks. Just because Go Shintai is so popular right now. Which I think is a reasonable call if you see that deck all day. They're supposed to... I think kill the Ornithopter of Cat. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 Absolutely not. Um, I think we just use this to ramp, right? Okay. Uh, that is a white card. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I very much like this. Because Juka Naturalist, Gilded Goose, and, um,. Pretty, pretty great. Anyways, um, I was just talking about hands that you're not supposed to keep, and I kept a pretty terrible one, but now we have an actual white land on the field. I assume they just board wipe us here, but in case they don't, I, I'm fine taking the two damage here. And we have another white tap land coming in with Jetmere's Garden, so like, I'm all pretty happy how that turned out. We can go Idyllic Tutor, Sanctum of All, play Jetmere's Garden. Yeah, that is probably just the most optimal thing to do right now. They do have so much mana, it is. Pretty, pretty crazy, and they can they will be able to refuel with this Karuga the Macro Sage, so um, gotta watch out for that. Yep, Joda, one, two, three, Karuga to hand, yep. Okay, Grim Tutor.
We could just get a Thoughtseize with this. We could. But is that better than proactively going into our own game plan? I think the answer is no. I think the answer is no. So uh, search for glory, sanctum of all. Yep. Grab you. Grab you. And I think we're supposed to play the Sanctum of Tranquil Light right now. Like, we could save it to get one more token with the Ghost of Life's Origin. But just having... Um, more shrines out on the field to draw with. And the reason why a Sanctum of All here is such a high upside play is... If we don't get absolutely destroyed, which is... Very likely, actually. Um, we can go Grim Tutor for an extra turn spell, and then we have enough. Sa uh, oh god! Yeah, that just destroys our artifact or enchantment. Yeah, we, we legit can't cannot beat this card, so um, we we got to scoop to that. But you know, we had a very high upset play, and I think we needed to take the risk. Um, GG. We are ready to play against Falco Sparrow, Pact Weaver. And, um. Yeah. This is not the mirror match, so I don't think Swan Song said it's best here. And uh, we just don't have too much action going on here, so we're going to take the free Mulligan. Yeah, we just. Now we have Counter Spell, you know, the Counter Spell, then um, a Draw Shrine. Life is good. Life is good. We're actually going to drop our commander on turn 3, and then on turn 4. We do have the double blue to... Like, this is the card we actually want to protect with counter magic, right? Um, so... Let's just stop the commander. Yep. And then Sanctum of Calm Waters. And, um... It's fine. So now this should draw us a ton of cards. We know top card draw is in fact more important than gaining life. Who could have guessed? And uh, oh, do we want to mind spike instead? How about if we do? Because they like they're not going to likely have too much reward. Yeah, yeah, they, it's, they only have one creature in hand, a non-creature in hand anyways. Okay, and now we pop off, because we're going to draw four cards in the next main phase, and uh, that is that is going to be pretty brutal. They're very... Oh wow, Captain Eberhard actually being pretty relevant here, not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> actually pretty relevant card, pretty cool. Love the tech. Um, in case we draw instant speed removal here, before the Sanctum of Calm Waters triggers, we want to get to the draw step, and then we want to use that instant speed removal. Like here, I would have used the instant speed removal, and then we draw the cards with Sanctum of Calm Waters without the cost increase here from Captain Neighborhood. But um, sadly, that doesn't work. Um, I believe we can just discard something here. Something, something. The question is, how, how crazy is it to just Wrath of God here? J just straight up Wrath of God. Um, it's probably not too crazy, but also not amazing. Like, because, you know, without our creatures, we only have one shrine here. Uh, we could just tie warp, which is, you know, a decent line of play, but I think it's just not a line of play I'm willing to make right now. So I believe this fetches for red. Potentially, yeah, red. Red or uh, blue. And then Horton of Sea Winds draws us a turn. We can also just go Starfield Mystic Horton of Cleansing of uh, Fire. I like this a bit more because it gives us the cost reduction for next turn. 
Um, and the card we usually want to draw into with the Sanctum of Calm Waters is Time Warp anyways. So, and we already have a Time Warp in hand, but maybe it's just better to get the card draw out. It's basically card draw versus mana. Like, this gives us more mana next turn. Um, let's play, but uh, the other play gives us more card draw. Also, it only gives us one more mana, technically. Uh, yeah, maybe the card draw was better. Potentially. Likely. Yeah. Oh, well. So, Tanzania Quandrix. Okay. I believe I'm just very willing to uh, wipe that board. Say so, yes. Beautiful. Oh, maybe we're not so willing to wipe that board after all. Oh, because now we have a Assassin's Trophy for the Tanzania Quandrix. Let's just... Assassin's Trophy... Maybe we're supposed to... Can we board wipe plus a shrine? We cannot. We can not. Very interesting. It, it's just I, I fail to see how the opponent is going to do anything this game if we um board wipe here because they're just completely empty. Completely empty. So yeah. Getting the life gain trying it was a mistake. That is fine. Yep. And now we board wipe. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they just concede because there is no way they are coming back from this. But also, then the play would have been uh, Thoughtseize and either keep up Assassin's Trophy or Swan Song. Yeah, uh, GG. We are ready to play against Quasar Augur of Agonies. And uh, let's see where this journey takes us. Ooh. We do like where this journey takes us. If we draw any untapped land, we can go turn to Juka Naturalist. There is the any untapped land. Turn to Juka Naturalist, turn three Enchantress's presence into Go Shintai of Boundless Vigor, which is very, very scary, and I believe it is way 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 more important to get down the enchantress presence than our commander because that can you know removal can point at this but removal can't point at this thing is we're likely going to play the goshinta of life's origin if they don't play the commander just because oh wow um because they're likely going to hold up counter magic we'd rather have this counter but now with the one mana i just don't believe that is likely the case so enchantress's presence Ah, beautiful. It resolves. Draw a card. Oh, and there is the Sanctum of all. And, um... Yeah, hopefully we get to play that card. Usually people just concede, but, um... You have to see what this card actually does to the board state. Um... Also, hopefully we don't die. Um... Because Quaza is a combo deck, there are um, two cards in the game that effectively, if you cast them with Quaza on the board, you just immediately win. Oh yes, and I was going to say, like, we want to hold the Mail for Mastery to kill Quaza in response to the, them casting those two cards, but there, we also now have a Duress at our disposal, which is a very, very great card to have here. So we can just go with the Goshen of Lies Origin and a Duress, and that is going to be really, really great for us. Uh, untapped land is what we really want here. Um, we could get a tutor to prevent them from getting the combo, or we could take the Wrath of God. Since we have the Baleful Mastery and the ability to remove Quasar at instant speed, I am going to just take the Wrath of God to put pressure on them. I um, believe that is very good here. And um, I believe they just, you know, activate the Tome of the Infinite, see what they, what card they got, uh, and then uh, very likely just five mana tutor for a final parting, sure. 
Um, if we top deck, you know, um, hand hate, that is going to be really disgusting. As it stands, we likely just, you know, pressure. Just pressure. Um, hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Let's just go with the Sanctum of All. They don't have enough mana to actually, um... Let's just leave them next turn. They don't have enough mana to drop Quasar and their other cards here. And I kind of hope they board wipe here, because if they board wipe, we can just show the power of, you know, a standalone Sanctum of All to get back into the game. Um... Beautiful. Um, notably, the Tome of Infinite has a chance of getting an enchantment aid. And uh, that is a big problem. Yep, Supreme Verdict. Yes, and now we get to untap with the Sanctum of All. We bring great. I believe we're supposed to just time warp here. Um, If we time warp, we would rather have a Honden of Sea Winds now. Yeah, let, let's just draw cards. So we do the Honden of Sea Winds, don't draw an additional card here. And then we... Oh, we just don't have the mana. We don't have the... We don't have enough blue. Didn't catch that quite there. So let's see. Chronica. And... Um, we, we go for the shrine that uh, doesn't get board wiped, but they still don't have enough mana here. Still don't have enough mana. Okay, um, I very much expect to the Sanctum of All to die. Like, the Tom of Infinite has a bunch of options, but like, they're gonna get the removal eventually for it. Sedgemore Witch, sure. Okay. So, Sanctum of All. I believe we want to just kill the Sedgemo Witch. Yep, that's a bunch of triggers. They are going to pay the three life, yes. And then Sanctum of All grabs a... a card draw shrine. And now we just get a bunch of card draw here. We could get mana, but I believe just drawing a ton of cards just to get a um, Thoughtseize effect is going to be pretty important here. Giant Growth, sure, on the Sedgemo Witch. Um, and... We could just Baleful Mastery this. I believe we don't need to do that yet. Okay. Draw more cards. Discard this. We could just name Drown the Lock, but if we name Quasar, we make their life more miserable, probably. Um, I think I just straight up want to Grim Tutor for Hand Hate. And that is likely going to get countered, but we're also kind of fine if they counter it, simply because that gives us um yeah they grim tutor and i'm just going to gamble on them not having a one mana counter spell and let's get the white in there time warp does it resolve it doesn't it does <gasps> okay we don't need all those lands. Yeah, and then Sanctum of All being absolutely disgusting. Um, we're just going to go face here, I believe. If we went face last time with this would have been lethal. With a um I think we want mana. With a uh, Sanctum of Stone Fangs. We get mana. Um Baleful, no, uh, Balagat Recovery is able to hopefully um, give us 
the time warp back to actually kill them. Mm hmm. Draw a bunch of cards. Oh wow, and look at all those cards. Look at all those cards. It is amazing. Don't need this red source. And. Potentially just play and activate Golos. Play and activate Golos sounds like a fine plan to me, honestly. Um, I'm all for that. Just to have the chance of, you know, spinning the wheel, getting the right card here. Um, if they want to remove Golos, sure, sorts the plowshares. You just activate in response. Oh, wow. Okay. It's fine. Escape to the wilds. Yes, we take a land out of the deck. We don't need a concealed courtyard, I believe. Oh, not, not in the deck, that is. Um, and no hand hate here. No hand hate between all these beautiful, beautiful cards. Um, anyways, uh, let's just play some cards. And I believe our life total is not too important here. So, play you. Play you. Play you. It's Curse of Silence, naming uh, their combo card that is in the command zone, Quasar Augur of Agonies, that way they can't, hopefully, win next turn, and just pass and still keep up the Baleful Mastery. Yeah, that seems like a fine play. Discard 9 cards, I don't think we need any of these lands. Uh, I don't think we need card draw. Land and I believe a land wealth also. I know that is more card draw. And Paradise Druid doesn't seem too hot. And we keep up an offer you can't refuse, all the Baleful Mastery here. And that is likely just GG. Tome of the Infinite, sure. And if they remove the Sanctum of All here, I think we are not even countering that? Sure. Yeah, let's let's just take this attack. Mm-hmm. And, um... That is lethal. That is now actually lethal. Point this at her face. Get the shrine that drains them. And, uh... This drains on any of main face. That is a good game. Mm. We do have counter spell backup, so uh, they didn't have a jammer remover. Otherwise, they would have one hundred percent got gotten rid of the sanctum of all. Also, now we have six shrines, and uh, these uh, the the yeah sure. Um. The ones that are going to trigger in the main phase now trigger twice. The other ones have been put on the stack before the um, we had six shrines, so we only get one copy of those. Yep. Draw a bunch of cards. And now... See? Now we start triggering twice, and this is so much damage. Look at this. I mean, they're already at two, but now they are super dead. Yeah, and that is the GG. Good game, opponent. Uh, great, great game. Also, um, sure, Tails End. Ah, oh, they wanted to stifle it, I see, but, um, yeah. Um, we could have also just Balagat Recovery, the, uh, Time Warp back. We have Swan Song and a Offer You Can't Refuse as a backup. And, uh, that is going to be the game. Yeah, let's just... Oh, GG! Wow. <laughs> we are done with the games. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. And Go Shintai of Life's Origin is certainly a really cool commander in the historic brawl and a great, great addition to the format. Um, shrines have always had the issue of just lacking a dedicated commander. Um, the two most popular ones were Golos and Kenrith. But uh, nothing like actually having the word shrine on it. So now we do have a commander that does that, and that is pretty, pretty great. Um, if you want to play the stack on a budget, I 
first want you to have a look at the five color Kenrith shrine deck that I made well, basically pre Kamigawa, no post Kamigawa, when Kamigawa came out with only uncommons and commons apart from the commander and you can just take that deck, craft the deck and then just slowly work up the like work towards this deck. Um, the commander is probably still Kenrith, I, I want to say, because um, the uncommon and common only version has the problem of kind of running out of cards. Uh, so Kenrith does give you mana sync, whereas Go Shintai, if, if you don't have the shrines going, is just a worse card than Kenrith, um, objectively. Uh, anyways, um, here's the problem, because like if you don't have the cards here, this deck not only requires you to have a ton of rares for the mana base, but um, also requires you to kind of have um, like like you you really want high value cards or like cards that just give you kind of ton of card in this kind of deck because you running out of cards is a very real thing if you don't have an engine going and that is definitely definitely a problem so um from the pile of cards that are like interactive uh i think the hand hate is definitely definitely like those are the um best options and then two to three wraths but you don't have to use these just any wrath will mostly do it you you want to have a couple of wraths right just to wipe the board clean in certain situation where you need it i have considered going up to three and might want to do that in later iterations but for now i'm just running two wraths and i think that's fine but um you want to have cheap interactions swan sing specifically is again for the mirror match um, like the deck doesn't really want to hold up mana, it really wants to tap out, but something like a Swanson is just so good in the mirror match um, that does happen, you know, pretty frequently. Surprised we didn't run into the mirror that often in the video, honestly. Um, yeah, the, the, you just cheap answers, um, you don't exactly need those. The cards you do need are the card draw engines, right? Like Sithis, um, and I, I would consider Grim Tutor a card draw engine because like it is so important for you, um, like card advantage engine, to just get these online and they're just usually miles better by anything else um, that you can do in those kind of spots. And Certain Grove also fetches an enchantment, so like you can see like these card advantage engines, like these and then uh, obviously a few uncommon ones, right? But you really want one of these cards usually in your uh, opening hand or like by the time you drop the... Like, you get a bit of mana because you just want to keep the cards flowing. And then, oh, also Assassin's Trophy is, sh should be in here. And then for the, the mana, um, as long as your mana taps for any color, I think it's fine. You don't need the cost register, just, you know, something that taps for mana is fine. Heroic Intervention and Teferi's Protection can save you from mass destruction, like, help protect the shrines. Um, you, funnily enough, you can also just, if they put a curse on you, you can Teferi's Protection the curse, and now it goes to the grave instead of attaching to you, which is pretty, pretty cool, I think. Um, yeah, then the... the Fires of Invention and Time Warp are definitely, definitely um, uh, really, really cool cards for the deck. Uh, Fires of Invention, if you're like totally popping off, it's kind of limiting y you, right? But if you're already popping off, you're already popping off, so that's fine. But Fires just gives you a lot of speed and tempo like if you go fires and then draw shrine and the next turn you draw like you don't need to even like deploy ramp you can just go and just jab like sanctum time warp right and then just next turn and then just shrine shrine and it just so much value um that they like it just provides you a lot of speed and then the time warp is fairly important in the deck as well you only run one of it, uh, like you only run one extra turn, and I think the other ones were probably a bit too expensive. But the, the Time Warp plus the uh, Balagant Recovery giving you the option of um, uh, returning the Time Warp uh, 
is really really good because like if you draw a bunch of cards you only need to draw into grim tutor or time warp um you know that's not the highest um chance but you know if you you draw 50 percent of your deck um you're more likely to not to get one of these and drawing 50% of the deck is not that unrealistic if you start drawing a ton of cards. And then just getting the exit turn out is... It, it just seals the deal. Um, yeah, and again, I feel... I very, very much feel like you need this mana base. And I, I'm very, very satisfied with the way the mana base worked out where... Um, we basically just say, okay, we want the forest and we make our... Um, check lands oh like we mostly use only um forest based check lands and like our lands we usually have our lands untapped when we want them and it, it, mana base felt pretty great considering the format we don't have fetches and um, this is basically you know full-on five color deck but um yeah uh, deck has played pretty great um there are a ton of other versions out there with um you know, sagas that also play around the um, first ability of Goshin of Life's Origin. Um, but I believe that is just a bit too slow. Um, but yeah, great deck, uh, really fun. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.